building out a new podcast studio means new gear and new equipment. Today, I'm gonna to show you the tech behind the brand new Steve Freeman Podcast Studio. We've got it all right here. We're gonna unbox it and talk about it right after this. the last several months I've been doing my podcast from the recording studio. At one end of the studio I've got my Argosy console and all of my Neve preamps, everything that I need to record vocals and do overdubs and produce records and do things like that. At the other end of the room I built my gaming setup and my streaming setup. When I decided that we were going to start doing the podcast, I thought, well, I've already got everything set up. I'm already using a really good camera to stream with when I stream on Twitch, when I'm playing Fortnite or Call of Duty or something like that. So I thought, well, we'll just do the podcast from there. Everything's set up. The key light's already done. It wasn't very long after doing the podcast, I thought, you know what? I'd really like to have a room that's dedicated to just the podcast studio, but also the place where I'll be filming most of my YouTube videos this year and beyond. I had the extra space here at the house, so I thought, you know what, it's time to do it. But then after I made that decision, I realized that it also requires buying and purchasing a completely new setup for a completely different room because I'm gonna leave the studio in there, I'm gonna leave the gaming and the streaming setup in there, so I had to set up a brand new room, which means new cameras, new computer, new monitors, new everything. So over the course of the last 30 days, I had placed a bunch of orders. I was waiting on stuff to come in. Finally, everything is in. And so I thought I'd do a video real quick and we would talk about the tech behind the brand new Steve Freeman podcast studio because I know so many of you guys love tech. I'm gonna show you what I chose to use and tell you a little bit about why, and we're gonna unbox it as we go. As many of you know, you've probably watched the video, a lot of you have, we decided to go with the Rodecaster Pro as the main workhorse as far as audio goes uh, for the Steve Freeman podcast. The reason I like this thing so much is it's got the Aphex on board, so it's gonna give you that oral exciter, it's gonna give you the big bottom. Everything here is condensed into one form factor. It's got the hot buttons for sound effects or basically on-demand hotkeys that will play any audio that you've got associated with them whatsoever. That could be a pre-recorded uh, interview, it could be sound effects, it could be anything you want it to be. And it already comes pre-loaded with the software with a bunch of really cool sound effects already. It's got four headphone jacks here because part of the purpose and the reason that I wanted to have the new studio for the podcast was I'm going to start having in-studio guests. We're going to bring in leaders from music, business, marketing, Every kind of business you can think about, we're going to have them here. Hit songwriters, other multi-platinum selling record producers, and, and just guests that I think are interesting. I want to have them in here. Um, and, you know, it's, we're in Nashville, so a lot of people come through Nashville, and I can get on their radar, and uh, we can have them here. So I needed something that gave me multiple microphone inputs, which this does. This has got four uh, class A mic preamps built into it, all with the Aphex on board with the big bottom and the Oral Exciter. This already also has Mix Minus built in, so I can reroute audio coming back from the computer, and I can have it on its own fader here, uh, which will allow me if I want to play something from a web browser, I want to play something from another source that's on the computer, I can do that without having any kind of echo or any kind of a delay or anything like that. And, and for those of you that, that do streaming or do live uh, streaming, you know how important that is. Even if you want to take a phone call over Skype or Google Hangout or something like that, you want that mix minus built in so that for me as the host, I'm not hearing a delay. And for you guys on the other end, you're not hearing a weird delay or feedback or anything like that. So it's got mix minus built in. You can directly connect your cell phone via TRS if you want or iPad or other TRS connected device. Uh, it's also got Bluetooth. So you can connect a Bluetooth device to it 
and have all of these simultaneous inputs and outputs. The one downside uh, that everybody made comments on my review video is this is not a multi-track recorder, okay? It is a stereo recorder. So for me, in doing a live show, it's absolutely perfect because we're producing on the fly. It's not something that we're gonna have to have multiple tracks that we can edit at a later point. So for me, in a live situation, it's absolutely perfect. But if you do want to record on board, you can to the micro SD card. Uh, and it also has main out. So if you want to go to a set of studio monitors or something like that, you can do that as well. So um, if you want to learn more about the Rode uh, Procaster, I will link it down below. And I'll also put a, uh, a video card up here. Uh, to the actual review that I did on the Rode Procaster. Um, I think it's a perfect all-in-one solution, especially for the live streamer. I, I think it's absolutely awesome. Okay, now let's try to get to some of this other gear. It, it, we've got it stacked everywhere up here, but let me see. Uh, we'll start here, small box, start here. This is the Logitech Brio 4K uh, webcam and even though in this new studio we're using all Sony cameras, we're using Sony A7 uh, two cameras will be the main camera. I'll also have one over here and one over here mounted so that I can have up to three guests and have those multiple camera angles uh, so that it, it, it captures everybody. When somebody over here is talking, it'll capture it. But I wanted to have a mobile cam, and, and don't ask me why, but I just thought, you know, there will be times where if we're talking about something or there's something in the room where I want to show, I wanted to be able to have uh, the 4K quality uh, of the, uh, the Logitech Brio, just so it, it may be setting over here and I can pick it up and I can show a different angle or get closer up on something if we're, if we're talking about a product review or something like that. So I picked up the Logitech Brio uh, 4K and I'm anxious to see uh, the quality on that. Um, and by the way, I have to get all of this set up because today uh, the, the brand, we're debuting the new studio uh, tonight on the Steve Freeman Podcast live at 6 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So I'm doing the video, but I also have to get all of this set up and connected and tested before six o'clock tonight. So if I run through some of this and I skip over some stuff, I apologize. We'll probably come back at some point, do another video kind of wrapping everything up and going over all of the details. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of do an unboxing and show you guys everything that's gonna go. Uh, so that's the Rode Procaster. Really gonna love that. Let's see here. Let's go. I got my trusty knife here. I, I have no idea what's in any, in any of these boxes. I have not opened them. I know what I ordered, but I have no idea what's actually in each one of these boxes. So as we open it, I will talk about what it is and what it's gonna do in the studio. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, StarTech 7 port compact USB 3 hub. Um, these are almost essential to me because I use so many USB 3 drives and so much more stuff is going to, to need the power of the USB 3. So I got this that is mountable and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it under this desk and there's holes pre-drilled already in, in this desk that I'm using and anything that needs to come out and down and through will go down and connect to this uh, StarTech uh, 3.0 hub. Very essential. Had to have it. And it feels like it's built like a tank. It's, it's, it's all metal construction. Uh, let's see. Next package. Like I said, I don't know what's in these things. So I'm, I'm learning as you guys are learning. And we'll get into some of the tech. And I'll tell you why I chose what I chose. Well, they package some of this stuff really good, don't they? Oh, these are the uh, wall camera mount systems uh, that I bought. That These are really cool because I wanted to be able to mount the cameras around the room um, so that I didn't have to use tripods because tripods take up room. And especially the big ones like the Benro that I use, they take up room. These I will be able to mount to the wall and they've already got your quarter 20 out here. This uh, swivels, tans, uh, pan, tilts and pans, 
uh, all of that and it screws directly to the wall. So I will have one over there that's pointed that way for that guest and one that's over there pointed that way for whoever the guest is that's sitting over here. By the way, I will put links. I would love to be able to tell you that I know exactly where I bought all of this from. Uh, but like I said, it was a month long process of trying to get all this in. So if I'm just being honest, I don't remember. I will go back through all the receipts at some point. I will upload links to all of this. They're not affiliate links or anything like that, so uh, don't worry about that. Uh, but I will put links to where all of this equipment uh, down below, so that if you want it, then you can go. You can go find it. And you can you can buy it. Ah, one of the most important pieces of gear when it comes to streaming and live streaming. And I chose to go with the Elgato 4K 60 Pro. Um, I know a lot of people are gonna say, and this is the internal, uh, this is the PCIe version. Um, so it will go directly into the computer. And, and I, I could have done a cam link, uh, but I wanted to, to have the quality just a little bit better than a cam link. Cam links work great. I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I wanted something that was directly um, attached to the motherboard. Um, I don't know why I just feel safer, like it's it's more stable or something, and it may not be. And I'm not broadcasting a live stream right now in 4K. Um, we're just doing 1080p right now, but at some point I am gonna go to 4K and I wanted the, the capability and kind of thinking forward into the future of knowing that at some point we are going to, to start broadcasting in 4K, especially when we take the podcast to Apple TV and Roku devices and Amazon Fire uh, devices. We will be delivering that content in 4K. So I wanted the ability, by the time we route all of the camera, uh, there's one piece of equipment that hasn't come in yet, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But we wanted everything to be able to go, especially when we're dealing with HDMI, we wanted to, uh, to be a little forward thinking and go ahead and go with a 4K. So we did the Elgato 4K60 uh, capture card. Um, I've got another Elgato capture card that, that works really well. Although in the streaming studio, I use a, an AVIO 4K um, and it's, it's phenomenal, it works great. Uh, but the Elgato is about half the price of that. Um, so, and the AVIO is not uh, PCIe and it's an external USB powered. So I wanted, I wanted the Elgato. So we saved some money there and we also got the added functionality of having it be PCIe. So very important piece of gear right there. If you're a live streamer, you gotta have that video capture card. Uh, let's see, next box. All right, first up is the uh, Rode DS1 desk stand. Now, I chose to go with this over, like, in the streaming room, in the gaming room. Um, I've, I'm using the Rode swivel arm. Um, and for streaming and for gaming and things like that, I think that's totally fine. But for a podcast, I, I constantly look over and I'm looking at my monitor and I'm seeing that that the swivel arm is, is usually cutting me right down the middle of the face. And so you've got the microphones covering up your face. And we've put a lot of thought into the room here. There's a lot of stuff you can't see just because of the lens that I'm using. I'm using a 28 millimeter lens right now. And the camera is probably about two and a half feet away. So you can't see everything that's in here. In the podcast, you will. And so it's like, I didn't want any of that to be blocked. And especially when I'm having guests on the podcast, I didn't want to be sitting here talking to somebody over here or over here or right there in front of me and have that arm coming down and cutting me across the face. So I ended up going uh, with the Rode DS1 desk stands for all of the different microphones that'll be around the table. Just to give us a clearer line of sight, better visibility. And you know, when you're, when you're interviewing somebody and you're, you're getting into a topic and some of the things we're gonna talk about are very serious, I wanted to be able to have that eye contact with my guests. And this allows me to do that. Um, and I just think it's gonna be a lot simpler. It takes up a lot less space uh, on the desk as well. So that's that. Um, also, I'll tell you, wow, okay. 
I'll tell you why I got these. These are the Aperture um, LED lights. And I, I watched so many reviews and, and decided to go with these because I, I love um, a Aperture or Aperture, however you say it. I've heard people say it 15 different ways. So forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, but I, I, I say it's Aperture or Aperture. Um, but I have the, uh, the uh, 120D. I've got several lights from them, and I've, I've just been extremely impressed with them. Uh, Peter McKinnon did an awesome video. He talks about it and shows you a different way. I've got the large light dome. It's what we're using right now. It's what I use for all of my YouTube videos, and I love it. But we've got a lot of LEDs that are going to be going on back here, a lot of different colors. Um, I've got two 50-watt LED uh, RGB colored lights that are going back here, you know, to really create some ambiance. And I've got LED Hughes LED strips behind my logo sign up here. And so I didn't want to have to use this constantly because when you turn on these LEDs back here and that you've got that big dome light up there, it floods everything out and you kind of lose the coolness, honestly, <laughs> the effect of having those RGB lights. So I wanted these small lights that I can set up that will provide a key light for up close, but not drown everything out in the background so that the, the money that we put into the, all of the RGB uh, LED lighting actually shows up and looks good. So we grabbed a couple of these um, and I think they're gonna work perfectly. All the reviews on them are great. Um, I've used something similar to this in the, in the gaming room and I, I'm, I'm really pleased with these. Uh, they come with their own mounts and things like that, so they're, they're easy to use. I can put one on top of each of the cameras um, and angle it and position it however I need to so that the lighting is perfect without disrupting the cool stuff that's going on back here in the background. So uh, you might wanna pick these up. Like I said, I'll put, uh, I'll put links to everything and everything that we got uh, below. Um, this I think was really cool. I actually stumbled on this and I, I'm going to have to open it because it doesn't have a picture on the box. But like I said, one of the things I, I wanted to try to get away from doing was uh, using so many tripods around the room. So I bought this thing and I'm really pumped up and I'm really excited about it. This is a uh, desktop mount by Manfrotto. This thing literally can mount right there and you screw it into your desk and it's got your quarter 20 on top and it of course tilts and pans. I'm gonna use this right here for the main camera that will be facing me at all times. Um, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna be using, the lens I'm gonna be using is the G Master uh, 16 to 35 from Sony because it matches up so well with the, the, uh, the A7 III. Um, and so I'm gonna mount this back there to the edge of the desk and have the camera sitting on top of this. And I, I, I just think it's gonna be absolutely perfect. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, and I, I was just, I was honestly just messing around one night. I think I was on Adorama. And I saw this and I thought, this is exactly what I need. We can get away from um, having tripods all around the room with stuff like this. And then, I'm, like I said, with these other mounts, I'll have the other cameras mounted on the walls. So it just, just made all the sense in the world. So you may want to check those out. Uh, it's a desk mount uh, by Manfrotto. And where's our trusty knife? Ah, uh, and a very key component of a podcast or a live stream is the microphone. And I chose to go with the RE27. Now, I have talked in the past about my love for the SM7B because I, I think for podcasts and for streaming and things like that, if you're wanting to go to a more professional setup, you really do have to have a professional microphone. And I love the Shure SM7B. I was gonna get uh, another one for in here, or another three in here. Um, and then I remembered back when I was in radio 25, 30 years ago, everything we always used was, was an EVRE20 and or an R, 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 RE27. And, um, 
so when I thought about putting this in here, it's like, I thought, okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the old days and do the RE27. So that's what I chose to go with uh, was the uh, EV RE27. I'm anxious to see how it sounds uh, with the Rodecaster Pro with the Aphex uh, built in. I think I know how it's going to sound because, like I said, I was in radio for years and these things sound absolutely amazing. And when you pair them with the processing that um, uh, that Rode has put into the Rodecaster Pro with the Aphex on board, the compressor, the EQ, the limiter, the de-esser, and then of course the big bottom and oral exciter that's built in. I think it's gonna sound amazing. We'll find out at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, the other two, the two big boxes, um, this, oh, there's, that goes up down here. I chose to go with two LG 34 inch ultra wide monitors uh, for in here. So we've got one here and one here, and they will kind of set up there and spread out um, right there because the way that I do my podcast is I need a lot of screen space, right? I, I've got OBS open over here, I've got um, YouTube open. I've got the, uh, we were using Restream because we, we simulcast to Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. So I've got the Restream chat uh, pulled up, which, you know, allows me to, it, it pulls all the chats from the different platforms and comment sections and puts them into one. So I need a lot of screen space to be able to see that, have browsers open, um, see when phone calls are coming in uh, because our phone, our VoIP system that we use for taking phone calls on the podcast is, it's VoIP, so it's, it's software-based and internet-based, so I've got to be able to have that open. So I decided to go with two LG ultra-wide 34-inch monitors because I think that's going to give me plenty of space. Plus, they're going to be, I needed something a little bit bigger because they're going to be a little bit further away and I needed to be able to see them very well without having them right here because unlike in the stream, in the gaming room, those monitors are kind of right here. So, you know, I can see them pretty good, but these are going to be a little bit further away. So I wanted something that was wide, uh, that was HDR, and that made it easy to see. So we went with those two LG ultra wide monitors, 34 inch. Um, and I'm looking forward to hooking these things up here in a little bit and uh, firing them up. Supposed to be very good monitors, um, display port, HDMI, they, they're, they've got everything. Um, so I'll let you know what I think about those as well. Um, one of the last pieces of gear that we've got is the powerhouse of the whole thing. What's going to run this podcast, you ask? It's going to be this, the Alienware from Dell. Um, I have almost the same computer as my gaming PC and streaming PC in the other room. I like it so well that I decided to pretty much go back with the same thing with a couple additions and a couple changes just because of going to be using it for live streaming exclusively and the podcast needing to record, knowing that we're going to be dealing with 4K resolutions. I bumped a few things up over um, what I have in the streaming room. Um, I do not have all of the details. Uh, memorized in the top of my head because honestly this was the first piece of gear to come in um, and uh, that was about 45 days ago uh, but I went ahead and I did take a screenshot because everybody's gonna ask what PC um, and so I could give you the uh, the specs here is what is in this computer the main things uh, anyway and I'm just gonna read them off guys um, we did the uh, the 850 watt bronze PSU liquid cooled chassis. Um, it's got a two terabyte 7200 RPM SATA six gigabyte uh, storage. Two terabytes, I know, but it's 4K footage. I've got a bunch of external drives and SSDs that are going to go in here as well. But I wanted to just step it up and go with two terabytes instead of one terabyte drive uh, in there. And then of course the boot drive is a 256 gig. Uh, solid state drive. So that's where I'll have all my, my core programs and things like that running on the solid state drive. Um, I went with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX uh, 2080 Ti uh, graphics card with 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 
uh, memory. So I'm looking for, it should be fast as hell. And that's the thing I'm really looking forward to is seeing in the, in the other computer over there, I've got pretty much, it's pretty much the same computer, except it's one terabyte uh, storage drive and it's got a 1080 Ti. So when I ordered this, the uh, 2080 had just come out. And so I thought we might as well go ahead and put the latest thing in there. So we went ahead and put the uh, 2080 uh, in this one with 11 gigabytes of GDDR6. Uh, and then, of course, Windows 10 Home 64-bit. Uh, the uh, processor, I went with the uh, Intel Core i7-8600K, 6-core, uh, 12-thread, 12, 12 megabytes of cache, and up to 4.7 gigahertz uh, with Turbo Boost technology. So that is the PC. That is the heart, the soul, and the brain of what's going to run the Steve Freeman podcast. Now, the things that have not come in yet, uh, I'm still waiting to come in. They were back ordered, um, so I'm not able to have them here and unbox them. As soon as they come in, um, I will, and that is because of the multi-camera setup. Uh, instead of going with like a stream deck or something like that, we are going with the Blackmagic ATM uh, switcher, 4K switcher. Um, and we're going to be converting everything to SDI um, and then back out of SDI into HDMI to go into the Elgato 4K capture card. So I'm waiting on the Blackmagic ATM to come in. Um, as soon as that comes in, uh, we'll be hooking up all the other cameras. Um, and I'll probably do another video at that point. But guys, there you have it. I just wanted to do a quick video, and it's actually not been quick at all, but sorry for that. But I wanted to show you the tech. I've been talking about the new podcast studio, and everything came in. Well, almost everything came in. And I wanted to just do a quick video, first video of 2019, to show you the tech behind the brand new Steve Freeman podcast studio. If you're not watching or listening to the Steve Freeman podcast, I highly suggest that you do. We are live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. here on YouTube, but also simulcast to Facebook and Twitch. If you can't make it on Tuesday nights, it's uploaded to Apple Podcasts and Spotify Wednesdays at noon. We're also going to be expanding the podcast to two days a week, and I'm thinking it might be Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I'll let you know soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know any questions that you've got. Put them down in the comment section if you have a question about any of the gear that we unboxed and I sh uh, I've shown today. Like I said, I'll put links to everything when I have some time down in the, uh, in the description below. If you like the video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel channel. Guys, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to getting it all cooked up. Uh, I've actually got to do it pretty quickly because it's five minutes after 11 and we go live at six o'clock. Guys, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.